A small fish named Intellanathus would have had to cling on for survival in the shadow of giant predatory invertebrates that dominated over its 400 million year old habitat. But this unassuming fish had a secret weapon that would pave the way for a bright future, a jawbone. This creature was the first animal with a modern face, perhaps one of the most important developments in vertebrate evolution. The first fishes date all the way back to just after the first appearance of multicellular life about 525 million years ago in the Cambrian period, with early representatives being small creatures like Hycoichthys that had no jaw but also had no pectoral or tail fins or complex gills. These small jawless fish are known as Anatha, meaning without jaws. Fish had to get by with no jaws for nearly 90 million years and were unable to push their mouth together with any more force than you could hold your lips together. This meant they were stuck sucking their prey probably most commonly from the ocean floor and probably always much smaller than themselves. Some of these primitive fish a little later on did have teeth, some had very impressive teeth even, although they lacked the leverage that would come from being attached to a jaw. As soft tissue does not preserve well it is difficult to tell, but they were most likely held in place by a ring of strong muscles similar to that of an octopus's beak. These jawless fish were very successful and common for millions of years and only started to disappear in the Triassic period. Although they are nowhere near as diverse as they once were, some offshoots of these primitive fish did survive to this day, like hagfish or lamprey eels. The two major fish groups, cartilaginous and bony fish, or chondrichthys and osteichthys, diverged over 400 million years ago, and the development of a jawbone predates this, meaning that jaws are older than trees. The development of the jaw started way back with the earliest fish during the Cambrian period, specifically within a group of very strange looking jawless fish called Metasprigna that first appeared around 508 million years ago. These fish developed an important structure known as gill arches that act as a support for all the fine filaments that run down a fish's gills. These filaments increase the surface area that oxygen can be absorbed from the water and therefore increase the efficiency of their respiration. This would have given Metasprigna an advantage over other fish. However, gill arches are also a very important precursor for developing a jaw as the most popular view on the evolution of the jawbone is that they are just modified gill arches. It is believed that the two gills closest to the mouth on primitive fish pushed forward over time, surrounding the mouth opening which created a mouth structure. This would mean that the jawbone that you have is homologous with a couple of 500 million year old gills. Due to the density of water, fish do not need a fully completed jaw for one to be of use to them. At first, they could have just given them a little more force or grabbing power, and could have aided in feeding that was primarily driven by them sucking in their prey or food. And over time, as the jawbone became more derived, it would become a more important part of their feeding method. This is in contrast to land creatures that require a pretty powerful jaw for it to have any use, as it has to do all the work. With each generation of fish that had a slightly more robust jawbone, there would be a slight advantage that would have eventually developed the jawbone that fish have today. Another theory put forward for why fish develop jaws is that at first they were not used to feeding at all, and in fact increased the efficiency of respiration, allowing a larger amount of water to be pumped through the gills with more speed. The jaw structure may have only been adapted for catching prey later on in its development. Primitive jaws allowed fish to fill many more oceanic niches for the first time, including predatory ones, and some of these creatures became very successful. The first widespread jawed fish appeared in the Silurian, and were known as placoderms. At the time these primitive fish first appeared, the oceans were filled with invertebrate predators such as giant distant squid relatives like the orthoco that was the largest animal that had ever existed at this point, and the infamous eurypterids, the giant sea scorpions. In defense of these large predators, the placoderms evolved thick armor plating, and no doubt it would have defended them from each other as well. The populations exploded in the Devonian period after 400 million years ago, and they became some of the most common animals around at this time as well as evolving into apex predators in some ecosystems, as one placoderm known as Dunkleosteus could grow to over 6 meters long, and shortly after the evolution of the jaw may have had one of the most powerful bites ever. Their success would have been in some part due to their jaw bones, but also placoderms were the first fish with pectoral fins, and even primitive tail fins. On some of them it is even very clear how it transitioned from a tail structure. Pectoral fins are crucial to giving swimming animals any hope of being stable in the water, and yet fish had to do without them for almost 100 million years. It is very possible that features adapted by these primitive fish were in response to their jaws, as this would have allowed them to fill many more niches that would have required them to be much better at swimming. 
it was once thought the placoderms were a sister group to the cartilaginous and bony fish. Like they were a third major group of fish that just happened to go extinct, and that many of their features evolved independently from fish alive today, and then were lost to history. However, it has now been demonstrated fairly well that they are actually the ancestors of bony and cartilaginous fish, and that their innovative features such as complex inner ears and paired hind fins are actually the same ones that fish have, and that their bodies make up the same quadrupedal plan that all subsequent vertebrates would follow, including humans. And one of the best pieces of evidence that they are the ancestors of nearly all vertebrates was hidden in their jaws. The derived jawbone that the vast majority of fish have today, and is the basis of the jaws of all land vertebrates, was thought to have first appeared on shark-like animals that were close to the common ancestor of the boned and cartilaginous fish. In fact, it was thought that sharks and other cartilaginous fish were very primitive, and that bony fish evolved from them, developing bones that had more calcium in them from a shark-like body. However, this now seems unlikely to be the case, and the owner of the earliest known modern jawbone was probably a placoderm called Intelanathus that was found in China. As placoderms were very diverse, so were their feeding methods and jaw structures. The most primitive group of placoderms were known as antiarchs, and usually had simple mouths on the bottom of their body, showing that they probably fed on the ocean floor. Another primitive placoderm, called Brindabellaspis, had a large flat snout like a platypus. The most successful group of placoderms, known as Athrodia, possessed simple beak-like jaws that only had a few bones. Among all these diverse feeding methods was Entelanathus, that was a pioneer of a new complex jaw structure they had two bones on the top jaw known as the maxilla and premaxilla, and multiple bones on the bottom jaw. So this little fish seems to bridge the gap between the two major fish groups. Early bony fish like Saralepus that lived over 400 million years ago share many features with Intelanathus in the jaw, but also other placoderms in body, offering evidence that Intelanathus' jaw wasn't just convergent evolution. Intelanathus and other findings have forced scientists to rethink vertebrate evolution, as this has challenged many long-held beliefs in the field. Most surprisingly is that cartilaginous fish may not be as primitive after all. If cartilaginous fish also evolved from placoderms, they must have evolved to have cartilaginous skeletons and not the other way round. Placoderms went extinct around 360 million years ago, and it was initially thought that this was due to being outcompeted by modern fish. However, it was most likely due to mass extinction events at the end of the Devonian period. As these creatures were very diverse and widespread during the Devonian, they had many innovations and tools for catching their prey. And among all these diverse body plans, just happened to be the one that would dominate nearly all vertebrates to this day. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video and want to be updated of future content, then consider subscribing. Many thanks to my patrons for supporting me, especially Fozzleworth and David Vanderost.